Praise the Lord, everyone. So, are we all ready to praise and worship the Lord? It's, it's, it's so good to uh, be here in the house of the Lord together. And we welcome you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, even as we prepare our hearts to praise and worship the Lord, let us just stand at our places. Let us just stand up and uh, let us, uh, before we go into worship, let us just close our eyes and cast our cares, our worries, our burdens all at the feet of Jesus. Why? Because He cares for us. Amen. Yes, so let's just pray and ask him to lead us and guide us. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful and wonderful day that you have added into our lives, Lord. And thank you for bringing each one of us safely here, Lord, and all those who are still on their way. We pray that you will bring them safely here, Lord. And we pray that even as we sing our praises to you, Lord, your name will be glorified and lifted higher, Lord Jesus. Help us to sing with all our hearts, Lord, uh, casting all our cares, our ang anxieties aside, Lord Jesus. Help us to give 100% to you, Lord Jesus, whether it be our praises, our attention, Lord, we give it all to you. Let's just sing this hymn of praise and glorify his name. All hail the power of Jesus' name. you Jesus let us just invite him into our lives into this uh, into this building because the thing uh, the only thing that makes this place special is all of us together gathered here and his presence which comes when two or three people gather in his name amen hallelujah so uh, he is great and he's gr greatly to be praised so let us just open up our hearts and praise him hallelujah let's just sing this song of praise and lift up his name
Bibles to First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one, and we'll read the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to His abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope he has begotten us again to a living hope not like the fading or the perishing hope of this world amen through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead and what makes this hope living is our resurrected savior our living god amen he is not dead a louder amen can i hear a louder amen he is not dead he is alive and and we find a living hope in him and what is that living hope? That we get to live an eternal life with Him in heaven, in glory. And isn't it a wonderful thing? We who are nothing, God chose us. God kept His eyes on us, chose us as we were, accepted us, loved us, cleansed us. And today He has given us this privilege to worship Him together and of living an eternal life with Him. So let's just, let's just, before we sing this next song, let's just close our eyes and let us sing our praises, our songs to Him. Open up our hearts and uh, we, I just ask you all to open up your hearts and open up your mouths and just shower your praises to Him because He deserves, He deserves every bit of it. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We would deserve all the praises. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How much ever we thank you, Lord, it's not enough, Lord That lay between us And how high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name Into the night Then to
our voices, our hands, because all praise, all glory belongs to Him. but with love and he accepted us as we were 
but lord but even though you accepted us as we were lord help us to live a life which is pleasing to you a life which is changed by you oh lord jesus a life which is pleasing to you lord which is acceptable in your sight oh lord and we bring ourselves before your throne of grace this evening lord lord we pray that we will be pleasing and acceptable sacrifices to you jesus hallelujah lord.
it again. Change my heart. Change my heart. I have come here to offer my praises. I have come here to join my brothers and sisters from different parts of this city to lift up and glorify and magnify your name. And I have come here to exalt the name of Jesus even through song. Reuben. Even through my testimonies, even through my praise, and I have come here to let my life be an encouragement, to let my life be an inspiration to all those who are around me. And even as much as I desire to do that, Lord, you know my inmost being, you know my heart, you know my heart. And as your word teaches me, my heart can be deceitful if I do not be careful. And this morning, that is why this is my prayer. Even as I place my hand upon my heart, I say, Lord, change my heart. Make it ever true to you. May my heart be true and committed to you. May my heart be loyal and faithful to you. May my heart be turned towards you. May my heart be bound by your will and by your love. May my heart be bound by your spirit. May my heart be captivated by your heart and your love this morning, even as I stand in your presence. Hallelujah. May I be like you. May I be like you. Dear people of God, as much as the Holy Spirit looks deep into our hearts to know and understand what our true intent is, I pray that when we stand before this God, our hearts and our minds and our lives will be so transparent before him that he will see and based on the sincerity, the honesty, the commitment, 
the truthfulness of our hearts he will respond he will respond to our hearts cry hallelujah pastor steve it is a joy for us to have you this praise god god bless you It's really a joy to, uh, sorry, I lost my throat a little bit, but it's really a joy to be with you this morning. Um, feel very honored uh, every time I come to Lucknow that I can come and be here. Uh, most of the family is, um, uh, there's a lot of, lot of my family that's come from uh, Chennai, and uh, they're all together this morning, but uh, I wanted to be here. Amen. Uh, uh, I just want to say it's uh, such an honor to be here. I want to thank uh, Pastor Papi Matai and Pastor Sammy for this opportunity. Uh, one of the things that um, I have learned and I'm learning is very important whom you keep yourself with. Um, I always tell my church and Uh, tell many of the people who are with me three things that are very vital to our lives is uh, to know uh, who are we uh, you need to know who you are in Christ it's very important um, secondly you need to know what you are doing you know what what are you up to what is what is it you're doing and thirdly where you are going You need to be very clear about these three things. If you want to walk in victory, if you want to live a purpose-driven life, if you want to be in the center of God's will, then firstly you need to know who you are, um, uh, what you are doing, and where you are going. And uh, what really... Um, so just before I share what God put in my heart, would you just close your eyes and pray? Hallelujah. Father, we worship you this morning. King of kings, Lord of lords. You're the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. You're the Lion of Judah, the Lily of the Valley, the bright and morning star. You're the Rose of Sharon, the Balm of Gilead, the one who was and is and is to come. Thank you this morning we sang that you are the Roaring Lion. Oh, we thank you that Death, hell, and the grave could not hold you. And we thank you that that's the eternal life and the living hope you have given every one of us this morning, God. We thank you for that, God. Father, we thank you this morning that we are who we are because of what you are in our lives. We thank you this morning for hope. We thank you for faith. We thank you for peace in our hearts. The Bible says in Romans 14 and verse 17, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And we thank you today, God, that you're pouring out your spirit upon us so that we can walk in righteousness, so that we can walk in peace, we can walk in true joy. And we pray, oh God, even this morning, God, that you would have your way in the midst of us. We welcome The new thing that you want to do in us this morning, God. We welcome your presence. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We know you are here already. We know that you're already here as Pastor Sammy said. God, we thank you this morning that you are there. You're waiting for us on a Sunday morning because you want to visit us. Because you want to touch us. Because you want to speak into us. Because you want to revive us. We want to put your words into us. You are the living hope. Lord, words of life, you speak into us, God. We thank you this morning, God, that, Lord, we can listen to you, God. Hallelujah. Father, we ask for an open heaven. We ask for an open heaven. Father, you said in your word, in John 6, 63, the words I speak to you are spirit and life. We thank you, God, that you speak spirit and life into us this morning, God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. When you come, when you come, every darkness flees. Everything in our head 
every stronghold of the enemy, every vain thought, imagination, God, everything that is so strong, every earthly thing, Lord, falls apart. Hallelujah, because the words you bring brings life. We thank you when you come, darkness flees, death flees, bondages are broken. Chains are broken. Addictions are broken. Oh, dark things in our lives are broken when the light comes. And we thank you this morning that you are here, God. Oh, we worship you. Come on, just open your mouth. Just begin to worship God. Hallelujah. We need him this morning. Oh, Rabba, Shoto, Rabo, Riyara, Rabba, Le, Ramando, Rabo, we worship you, worship you, worship you. Ki, Rabba, Rabba, Sata, Rabba, Rabba, Nama, Rabba, Rabba, Shoto, Rabo, Hallelujah, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, we welcome you, Robo Your word says times of refreshing. They come from the presence of the Lord. Refresh us this morning, God. Refresh us, Lord. Pour out your spirit upon us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Miracles take place in your presence. Impossible situations change in your presence. Healings happen in your presence. Oh, God. Doctors' reports change in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Judgments are overturned in your presence. Hallelujah, we worship you. Worship you, worship you, worship you. We bless your mighty name. Bless your mighty name. We honor you, God, this morning. Great and mighty God. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your word says one shall put to flight a thousand, two ten thousand. We are many in this place this morning. We thank you that Lucknow shall be saved. Oh, Lucknow shall be washed with the blood of Jesus. Oh God, the strongholds of Lucknow will come crumbling down because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, we thank you, God. We are not of the world. We are of the world. Jesus Remember your words you said to Pilate. You said if my people were of this world, they would be fighting. But my kingdom is not of this world. We thank you this morning, God. We belong to an eternal kingdom. To a God of a living hope. That we can walk with you. Thank you, God. We are in another dimension. Hallelujah. We are seated. The Bible says... In Ephesians chapter 2, we are seated with Christ in the heavenlies. Far above principalities, powers, authorities, rules, dominions. We thank you God, there are many dominions, many rules, many authorities. Many, many, many things that this dark world has put around us. Is trying to control us. Is trying to control the church. But we thank you, God. We are not seated under it. We are seated above it Amen. with Christ. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. Paul says, set your mind on things above where Christ is seated in the heavenlies. So this morning, God, have your way in us. For we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Amen. Our God is a faithful God. Our God is a wonderful God. With Him all things are possible. Amen. One thing with God is, you know, we, we all believe in the Lord. But we can, you know, do something about what we believe. We can convert our belief into faith. And then we can take faith into a now faith. Amen. We believe in God. We know that he can do miracles. We know that he can do wonders. We know that, you know, from the past we have seen his hand many times. We know what he is capable of doing. All of us know that. We know that we serve an almighty God. Faith is the next step. 
Hebrews 11 and verse 1, the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Amen? So that's about, you know, Hebrews 11 and verse 6 says, when you come to God, you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, so that's what we believe. Then we take that belief to the next level, which is faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I have a pair of glasses in my hands. It's substance. Amen? But faith is not having it in my hand, but still being able to see it in my hand. Are you with me? That's faith. Faith is believing and seeing your miracle even before it manifests. That's what it is. Seeing your breakthrough even before it manifests. I know of a family um, many years ago, some years ago, the husband used to drink a lot. A very good Christian family, um, wonderful believers. The husband was also a believer, but he gave his heart to the Lord. But he was addicted to alcohol. He simply, um, you know, he, he could not have control over it. So twice, thrice, four times in a week, he would simply disappear from home. While everything is okay at home, suddenly he would walk out and go to a bar, would drink and drink and drink. And, and the problem with his drinking was he would drink until somebody had to literally throw him out of the shop had no control, and uh, would come home totally drunk. Very nice family, very nice uh, people. But that was what it was. And, you know, we prayed. And I often used to tell his wife, put your hands on him when he's sleeping and pray. And when you pray, see him with eyes of faith as a man delivered from alcohol. What is it you want to see in him after his deliverance? See him that way. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Sometimes we can have a sickness in our body. Sometimes we can have challenges in our life. Sometimes we can be a victim of something else. Sometimes we may walk through a situation where we don't know why we are walking through that. Why me? Have you asked that question? I've asked that many times to God in my life. I've been through times where I've asked God, why me? Why is it that I'm going through what I'm going through? And you know, it's a challenge. Maybe you're walking through a challenge. But then, we need to do something about what we believe. We take our belief to the next level where, like I told this, the wife, I said, when you pray, begin to see him as one who is totally delivered. And begin to say to God, Lord, thank you for delivering him. Thank you for setting him free. I can see him with eyes of faith as a man totally delivered. And I would tell her, just pray when he's sleeping. Once he's knocked off and he's fast asleep, he doesn't know what you're doing. Get up middle of the night, put your hands on his head and begin to pray and rebuke that spirit of alcohol because it has no power. Amen. Pray, 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 pray. And the important thing is to begin to see. So you convert your belief into faith. Amen. Then you take that faith that you now have to the next level. What is it? It's a now faith. Amen. You come to a place where you're saying, God, I want to see it now. Like Mark 10 talks about Bartimaeus, right? He was a blind man. Um, could not see. Was begging on the streets. He heard that Jesus is coming. And uh, the amazing thing about Bartimaeus was, you know, he believed in God. He simply believed in God. Okay? He not only believed in God, Everybody who walked around with Jesus, many of them saw Jesus as a prophet, as a miracle worker, as somebody who was special. But this blind man, though he could not see, saw him as the Messiah. 
he saw him as the son of David. You remember when he called out to Jesus, he said, Jesus, son of, he saw him as Lord. He saw him as savior when he was blind. Do you see? He believed in his heart. He believed that this was the son of God. He believed that the one who was coming was the Messiah. Then he took it to the next level. Faith. He said to himself, if Jesus can hear me, then I can be made whole. You remember Jesus said to him, your faith has made you whole. You remember that? He had faith. He had faith that he could see even though he was blind all his life. The stigma that he had, the lifestyle that he had, he has never been able to see. He was a blind man. Can you imagine a blind man having faith to see? He has never seen. He's totally blind. But he had faith. He was able to see himself on the other side of his sickness. Are you with me church this morning? When you come to God, you must be able to see yourself on the other side of your problem. Amen? Mountains stand before us. Jericho stands before, stood before the children of Israel. But to Joshua, the word of the Lord was more important than the strength of the wall that stood before him. Are you with me? Many of Israel's victories were victories because of the word of the Lord. Faith to believe in the word of God. Faith to believe what God has spoken to you. If he would say in this word, I am the Lord that heals you. If he says in this word that I will deliver you. If he says in his word, I will help you. If he says in his word, I will teach you. Then he's going to teach you. That's what it is. Batime has believed it. He simply had faith in his heart. He simply believed that if I can shout and if I can come to Jesus, then I'm going to be healed. The third thing, he made his faith a now faith. He was not looking for maybe it would happen today. Maybe Maybe if it's God's will, he will do for me. Did he say that? No. He said, now. He's passing by. Now. It's now for me. He became desperate with his faith. He became desperate with his belief and with his faith. I want to tell you something. When you become desperate for God, you will begin to do something which is beyond the natural. Right? Mark chapter 5, Jairus went and simply fell at the feet of Jesus. He was a teacher in the synagogue. He knew that if he went to Jesus, he may be ostracized by his peers. He may, he may be rejected. You know, because this was the time when the religious order of the day was fighting with Jesus. The Pharisees were fighting with Jesus. But he was desperate. He came to that point. He was willing to lose anything to see God do something for him. The question this morning is, what are we willing to lose in our quest to have God visit our life? What is it you're willing to lose? What is it you're willing to lose? Time? Sometimes we have no time. Are we willing to lose time for other things so that we can have time for God? Are we willing to say, God, money, I have needs, I have many things that I need to take care of. But Lord, this is time. I'm desperate for you. I'm going to sow into your kingdom even more than I'm going to sow into my own life. Can I show to God by my desperation that God, I'm going to sow into the church. I'm going to sow into your kingdom. 
I'm going to give my best offering to you. I'm going to give more than I have ever given when the offering back comes. I'm going to put something just because I want you to know now you are more important than anything else. Than my next shirt, than my next pan, than the next thing I want to buy. I need a new phone. I have an old phone. But Lord, now I want to tell you Instead of investing in a phone, I'm going to invest into your kingdom. I'm going to put that money into the offering bag because I want you to know by my action that you, I am desperate for you. I'm not asking about money. I'm not speaking about your offering. I'm speaking about something in the heart. Become desperate. That you come to that point in your life where God becomes everything to you. become everything to you. Desperation. Desperation. Jairus was desperate. The woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5, she was desperate. Many people were desperate in the Bible. Pressed into the presence of God. Can you imagine? Reached out and said, if only I will touch the hem of his garment. And that desperation made that miracle, that faith, and now faith, now, now, now. I want you to know this morning, God wants to do something for you. Amen? Amen. He's not just, uh, uh, you know, he, he just doesn't want you to know he's a great God. He wants you to experience that he's a great God. He wants you to experience him. Christian life is about an experience. I'm going to read a familiar scripture to you, Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, that all of us know. Just turn with me. Verse 28, here Joel is talking about the end times, the times that we are living in. And he says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Okay? And then it goes on to many things. But I want to stop here. First of all, Joel says, in the last days, God will pour out his spirit. So, we are in a time where God wants us to experience him, not in trickles, but in abundance. Come on, are you with me this morning? God wants you to experience him, not in trickles, but in abundance. This is a time where the church needs to experience God in his fullness. This is not a time when there is a little bit of God and a little bit of this, that and the other. This is a time where it is all of God. Amen. You can come into the tremendous outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 5. One of the things Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. God wants to fill you. Jesus said, if you hunger for God. You will be full. Acts 7. Stephen was a man full of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5 and verse 18. Uh, Paul writes, Do not be drunk in wine in, what, in which is much dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody. See, when the Holy Spirit, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, when you're full of the Holy Spirit, then you move into another dimension. What is this dimension? Joel says, you will prophesy. What is the prophetic? The prophetic is first, you are able to hear God. You're able to hear what he's talking to you. 
You know exactly the voice of God. Now let me tell you something. For example, you know, um, now, now I know Pastor Sammy a little bit. I'm just getting used to him, okay? A little bit. But I'm getting to know his voice. Is that right? So I talk to him a little bit. I know his voice. Then after some time, if I'm in my home, and if he walks into my home, um, and if, let's say, for example, he's talking to my wife, I'm in another room, and I can hear his voice. As soon as I hear his voice, I know Pastor Sammy has come into the house and is speaking to my wife. I don't need to go and see him. I don't need to stand before him. And I don't need to pray. Or I don't need to say, oh, God, help me to hear your voice. Help me to hear his voice. No, no, no. I've already got used to him. Isn't that true? Uh, spouses know their husband's voice. My wife, I know my wife when she comes into the house. The minute she steps in, who put the chapels here? <laughs> who put this here? Who? I know she's home. Amen? One of the first things about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is you know the voice of God. Are you with me? See, what's amazing about the voice of God is once you know his voice, the next best thing that can ever happen in your life is for you to submit to that voice. If you learn to obey that voice, your life becomes powerful, glorious. You see that? It takes something out of us. Okay? But first thing is to know his voice. Once you know his voice, you are at a huge advantage because everything after that is about you obeying that voice. God told the kings, the prophets, he gave a word. And then the word just came to pass. In, 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 in Deuteronomy 7, God said to Moses, Seven nations, greater and stronger than you, I will give them into your hands. It's over. It's the voice of God, given to the man of God. And seven nations simply broke down when they stepped into the promised land. That's what the voice of God is about. When God speaks to you, then it's your part if you respond. In obedience, obedience is willing to let go of your personal rights, ambitions, thoughts, wants, wills, whatever it is. If you have the ability to let go of everything and say to God, yes, I'm willing to obey what you say, then you walk in miracles. You walk in the supernatural. You walk in the power of God over your life. You understand? Because it's no longer what you're doing it's about what God is doing through you. Are you with me? It's what God is doing through you. We, we, we see that all the time. How when we minister, in, you know, let's say for, we, we were in Rajasthan for three days before we came here. We saw tremendous miracles. Tumors disappeared. Uh, you know, people could, you know, could breathe well. Something happened in the heart. All kinds of things. But for those miracles to happen, it wasn't prayer. It wasn't the way we prayed. It was prayer, but it's not the way we prayed. It's because you are worshiping God, and then you are, I am asking God, okay, God, what is it now? What is it? What is it? What is it? And then the Lord says, I'm going to heal my people. The minute you hear that word, you already know he's going to heal people even before any sickness is healed. Even before that, for three years ago, 2019, when we went, that night I, I was preaching, I, I gave an altar call in Rajasthan, and just walking up and down asking God, God, what to do? And, um, and the Lord said, call people who are healed. Voice of God. I want, I'm not talking about myself, I want you to understand the voice of God. Call people who are healed. I say to God, but I have not prayed for healing. Again I hear in my heart, call people who are healed. 
Sano was with me in that meeting. So I said, Sano, just let's call people who are healed. It was very strange because you are not prayed yet. There's a tremendous anointing in the place. And then when you call people who are healed, there's a child born deaf and dumb, healed. There's a child born blind, healed. For the first time in our life, I've never seen it in all my years of ministry. A lady takes her hand out of her sari, leprosy healed. Why I am saying that is, that God is the same God who's here this morning. Are you with me? I want you to understand that. What happens when God's presence comes upon you is, you move to another dimension where his voice comes. Right? He begins to speak. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. You suddenly are open to the spiritual where you can hear the voice of God and you can begin to see what God is showing you. That's the prophetic. You see it, you speak it, it happens. That's what it is. God is showing you something. You speak it with your mouth, you see it happen. And the amazing thing about the prophetic is, to the end time church, the prophetic in a way is for all believers. It's for everyone. Suddenly there came the sound of a mighty rushing wind and it filled the place, Acts chapter 2, where they were together, right? And they all began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When the Holy Spirit comes, they spoke in tongues and they began to prophesy. That's what it is. Of course there is an office of the prophet. In, in Ephesians 4, the Bible talks about an office of a prophet. That's a special calling. And, and that's not something you can choose. That's something God brings in to your life. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. You cannot make yourself come to that place. It has to come from him. You cannot be the one who can begin it. God has to begin the process. Are you with me? Somebody's got to come and say to you, this is what God is saying. Somebody's got to come over your life and you need to know it in your heart. It is God. You can't learn to, pro to, to, to prophesy or go to some prophetic training and become, come into the office of a prophet. You can learn to prophesy. That's another story. Are you with me? But this prophetic, you know, which 1 Corinthians 14, Paul writes about, uh, is for uh, edification, exhortation, and comfort. You remember 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul writes what the gift of prophecy is. That's for all of us. Where God will give words, where you can encourage, edify, and build everyone. The secret is the voice of God. When you hear it, then you have to just obey. You, it's beyond like for me, I was saying to God, but Lord, I have not prayed yet. You know, I'm trying to be very religiously right. I need to do the, do the right way, you know. Okay, I now, now I have to pray for healing and then the healing will come. No. God bypasses some things and he wants to do something. Our life is not about what or how we want things to happen. It's about how he wants to come through. Amen. God wants to come through to your life in his own way. In your own way. If you want God to come through upon your life in your own way, then you need to come in, in God's way. Then you need to leave your way and come to God's way. If you want to see God do something for you. Prophetic. Then the Bible talks about your young men shall see visions, your old men dream dreams. That's from God. God's spirit upon you brings you to a place where you begin to see. <clears throat> you begin to see things. Sometimes when I go to a church, not all times, sometimes, some countries when I go, even before I go to the meeting, God shows me how the church is. How it looks on the inside. I remember in Dubai, it's a very funny thing that happened. That morning I was praying, I was supposed to go to preach in a church. And uh, they told me, this is, this was many years ago. 
they told me okay church is a little different in dubai there's a huge building with many churches happening in the same time many many meetings in the same time so i said okay and then <clears throat> that morning i was praying and i saw this man stand before me so i asked the lord what is this he said he's the pastor of the church oh i said okay so anyway i went to the church i was standing down with my wife and um, some friends and then i saw this man pass me by so i looked at my wife and say okay the pastor is going up we are going to his church she said how do you know no i said i saw him in the morning where she is oh i said no 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 let's forget it let's go because god not only showed him he also showed how the church would be and how it will look inside and everything because he showed me what will happen after the service after the meeting how god will move so when i went and opened the door here was the man standing with a mic in the front and i said what exactly the way god showed it the church looked exactly like that are you with me sometimes god wants to show you what he wants to do in your life he wants to show you about things in your future he wants to show you things about your children sometimes you know our children go through challenges but god wants to show you something about them in the future then your prayer changes the way you pray changes the way you look at them changes if you can't see that you would you would walk in fear oh what will happen to them who oh, what will happen to them and you begin to operate in fear but when you have seen something you will operate with them in faith because you know my pastor told me you are a pastor that's who you are whether you like it or not this is what you will be you will go to the nations of the world god will simply open doors in every nation and he said it's not because of you is not because of your annoy of of uh, your ability to preach or anything he said it's your calling this is who you are you will go wherever you go god will open doors for you whichever city you go you will be preaching whatever you do that that's because of god's hand upon your life don't get don't let pride come into your life don't feel that you have come or achieved something and then you know i, I remember one day the lord told me you are in the season of harvest but there are many who have labored for the harvest to be what it is so never you know have pride because you see many things happen in your life and ministry it's because of somebody's labor pain somebody has given their life for it you see when god speaks to you then you even if you see something very dramatic happen already you know the voice of god you know what god has spoken to you so you don't let this thing get into you you know here i am here i have something to deliver no only god can do something only god can touch people only god can save people only god can deliver people amen so joel is talking about this great outpouring of the holy spirit which we are under right now and i want to tell you if you want to move into that dimension of believing faith and a now faith you need to come under the anointing that's when when you we all believe in god that's when god tells you something you move from believing to having faith in god substance you begin to see things you begin to see by revelation and then you can see things god do in your life and then the moment comes when god says now and when you do it you see it happen immediately just like that you see it happen now and you see it happen as the power of the outpouring of the holy spirit when god pours out his spirit one of the amazing things about our life is we know jesus for who he is amen there's one thing to know about jesus there's another thing to know jesus amen the anointing of the holy spirit is to bring to you the ability of understanding jesus for who he is Amen not in the head but in the heart John 6:63 Jesus said the words i speak to you are spirit and they are life from his spirit into your spirit God never appeals to your head God speaks to your heart are you with me 
God is never trying to convince you in your head. He, con he speaks to your spirit. And what he speaks to you is truth. You shall know the truth. And then the truth. Ah, exactly. The truth will do something to your life. It will change your life. It will transform your life. Because it's inside the truth where your miracle stands. It's right inside. In Mark chapter 5, 35. When they came from the house of Jairus and told uh, Jairus, your child is dead, don't trouble the master. Jesus said something. He said, do not be afraid, only believe. Choice. You have the voice of reality where your daughter is dead and you have a, you have a real news. It's reality. On the other side, you have Jesus and his voice that says to you, do not be afraid, only believe. What do you want to put your life into? He speaks to your spirit. These people speak to your head. Okay? Want to, leave, want to listen to your head? Or do you want to listen to your heart? Jesus never said to him, I will, you know, uh, I will come and raise her up and everything. So don't be afraid. Just believe. Did he say that? No, no, no. He only said two words. Do not be afraid, only believe. That's all he said. Then the choice was on Jairus. Should he believe what he spoke from his heart? Or should he think from his head? She's already dead. And that woman with the issue of blood also said, you know, uh, Jesus also said to that woman, you know, said, power has gone out of me. Maybe he has no power anymore. You can have thoughts in your head, right? I want to tell you the biggest battlefield of our life is our head. Many times our head disagrees to what God says in his word. I was in a meeting once. There was a man lying, you know, everybody was sitting on the floor. And there was a man lying down. And I didn't realize, you know, I, I thought maybe he was demon possessed or something. You know, I didn't know what was wrong. But he was on the ground the whole time. I finished the meeting. I went to him and I said to him, uh, I, I said, w w what's the problem? They said he's totally paralytic. Paralytic. So I said to them, can you please lift him up? So they lifted him up. When they lifted him up, see, I'm not thinking in my head because what I'm going to tell you now is not from the head. I can never think like this. I just told them, take your hands off him. So they said, no, no, he cannot stand. I said, I know that. Take your hands off him, I said. So the, you know, it was a village church, so they got scared. They just took the hands off and he was standing. They were shocked. What? You know, I said, leave him, leave him. Don't touch him, I said. Don't touch him. I said, God wants to heal you, brother. God wants to heal you. I told him, listen to me, listen, look at my eyes, I said. Look at me, look at me. I said, take one foot and put it in the front. Slowly take one foot. So he slowly took one foot. He put it in the front. I said, okay, put your weight on this foot and now take this leg and put it in the front. So he slowly put his next foot. I said, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Come, let's walk. Do it again. He walked out. He came out of the church. I said, go home. Jesus has healed you. You cannot think. Can you think about it in your head? No. You see, at that moment, when God tells you something, that's the moment you convert what you have believed about God into faith, and then you move your faith into a now faith. Are you with me? That's what God wants to do for every one of us. Where we move. Let me just say this before I finish. Uh, quickly, you know. John, if you turn with me to John chapter 1. Look at John's experience. I just want to uh, leave you with that. It's been burning in my heart. So, John chapter 1. And um, in verse 14, John is now writing about an experience. Okay, I'm talking to you about now making 
you know this all that you believe about Jesus and experience in your life look at John writing his experience he says in verse 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth how did John see many saw Jesus as a miracle worker, as a prophet, in many different ways. John saw Jesus glorious. How did he see him? Glorious. He says, we beheld his glory. There was something glorious about him that caught our eyes. What kept us with him was glorious. Are you with me? One thing about the presence of God, the presence of God will keep you in a place which is glorious. David writes, you remember, Psalm 91, 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place. That's a secret place. He says, I have a secret place with God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What is amazing about the shadow is you put yourself in that glory realm. You put yourself in that shadow. Okay? So then you realize anything that attacks you needs to pass through that shadow. Are you with me? Anything that comes against you needs to pass through that shadow. Therefore, you know no weapon formed against you shall prosper. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. He is like a wall of fire round about me. He's engraved me in the palms of his hands. Not a hair in my head will fall down without his knowledge. He who touches me touches the apple of my eye. Why? He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. If God be for me, for us, who can be against us? All of this is because you know you have kept yourself in a place. Beheld his glory. John writes in verse 35. Again the next day John stood with two of his disciples. Looking at Jesus as he walked. And he said behold the lamb of God. You see that? When everybody saw a man. They saw the lamb of God. Glory. It's very important how you see Jesus in your life. Amen? It's very important how you see Jesus in your life. Mount of Transfiguration. Matthew 17. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John, his brother, led them up to a high mountain by themselves and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as light. What was it? They saw, he saw, the second way he saw was, he saw a transfigured Jesus. He saw Jesus in another realm, in another way, in another dimension. Are you with me? When you begin to walk with God, you see Jesus in many dimensions in your life. Many dimensions. You see him as savior, you see him as redeemer, healer, sanctifier, you know, the one who forgives you, one who is merciful to you. But you also see him as a God who is powerful, healer, deliverer, one word, just one word and you see miracles happen. Speak one word, Jesus, and you see miracles happen. That Jesus is used by people as a swear word. But when you use it, something happens in the crowd. Why? Because you know this Jesus in another dimension. Yes. If I have seen him as a God who heals, if I have seen him as a God in many different dimensions, I use it that way. When I say healing, two days ago in the meeting, you know, God, the Lord said to me, call those who are healed. And the second day, nobody came. First two minutes, no one came. Here are 800 people, no one came. And immediately your head says, no, yeah, yeah, it's not like yesterday. Today is a different day. You know, God didn't heal. Immediately your mind says that to you. 
Then in my heart, the Lord says, call those who are healed. So I said, in the name of Jesus, if you're healed, come up to the front. You suddenly see people walk up. This happened to me. That happened to me. This happened to me. This went away. That happened. This happened. You see? You see Jesus by the way you know him. John saw him as a transfigured. Quickly, one more thing. One John, one. He talks about the same Jesus in another dimension. I'm going to finish in two minutes. He says, was one that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifest and we have seen, bear witness, declared to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest to us. Now he says, this Jesus was somebody we handled with our hands. You see? Somebody we handled with our hands. This is the one I'm talking to you. He's somebody. I remember I was in a, in a, I'm going to be quick. I was in a hospital. Oh, are we time? Okay, I'll be done in two minutes. Sorry. Uh, I was in a hospital. Uh, you know, I was taken to emergency uh, because I had a heart problem. And um, while I was in the emergency, um, um, I had already taken an ECG in the morning. It showed a lot of variations. So that evening, they rushed me to a, um, a heart foundation because I was about to preach and I had something going in my heart. I went in. And um, while lying on that uh, stretch, I mean, that, that table, they, they put everything on me before they took the, um, the ECG. While he was, a, he put everything on me and then he went to switch, on, switch it on, the machine. While he was walking, I told the Lord, Lord, I have not done, I've done very little for you. And if I have a heart problem, it will bother me for the rest of my life. I don't know what you'll do to me. Please help me, I said. That's all I said. As soon as I said that, I saw, I, I felt a hand come over my heart and just touch my heart. I could feel the touch. Just like this. There was no hand. But I could feel a hand. And the minute that hand touched my heart. Suddenly my heart started pumping. It was like some gas was released. And it. And then. Tup, 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 you know. Just heart became calm. He switched the machine on. The doctor came and saw the ECG. He said. He said that one belongs to somebody else. This is this guy, and he has no problem with his heart. Till I die, I will never forget that hand. You remember, it happened about nine years ago. Are you with me? You begin to experience Jesus. And finally, let me just read this verse before we pray. The final way he saw Jesus. Revelation chapter 1. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden stamps. Verse 12. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, girded about the chest with a golden band. His head were, and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. John writes here, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And I saw. He saw a glorified Jesus. He saw Jesus as he was in heaven. You see? Dimensions. Are you with me? God wants you to see him in many dimensions. That's what makes your life powerful. That's what will move your belief to faith. Faith to a now faith. Shall we just stand up to our feet one minute? Hallelujah. I don't know what challenges you're going through. I'm sorry about the time. I don't know what challenges you're going through. But this morning I want to tell you the same God is here. To heal you. To deliver you. To change that situation in your home. To heal a sickness. To break an addiction. Whatever it is. The need that you have. 
God is here this morning. Not only that, he wants to pour his spirit upon you. So you begin to see him in many different dimensions. Your language will change. The way you think will change. The way you speak will change. Because now you know him in another way. Are you with me? The more closer you get to him, the more you see him. You will see him in another way. Hallelujah. Just lift your problems before God this morning. Let's just believe God for healing, miracles. This is God's house. This is the house of healing. This is the house of miracles. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I have spoken what you asked me to speak this morning. So God, I thank you because you said in your word, you would confirm your word with signs and, fun, uh, and wonders following. So in Jesus' mighty name, we pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray for sicknesses to disappear. We pray for problems to disappear. We pray for mountains to be cast into the sea. We pray for walls of Jericho to come crumbling down. We pray for doors to open. We pray for the impossible to become possible in the mighty name of Jesus. I take authority over every power of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places and we speak deliverance and healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Just receive your miracle. Tell the Lord this morning, God, I receive my miracle. By faith, I receive my miracle. Now, I receive my miracle in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you'd fill every one of us with the mighty power of your Holy Spirit. Oh God, that we will move from one dimension to another dimension of a revelation of Jesus in our lives. Like John experienced. And I pray, oh God, this morning, God, that we will walk in victory. We will walk in power. We will walk in true righteousness. We will walk in holiness. We will be separated from the world. We will be men and women, chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, will be a people set apart. In Jesus' mighty name, speak your blessing over each and every one in this place, Lord. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen and Amen.